This section is on uh, mathematical notation and a uh, refresher on some of the concepts from analysis. So not a complete course on course on mathematics, uh, but just to, to recall the notation and the basic principles and so on. So on this slide, uh, there is um, um, an overview on the conventions for the mathematical notation that we will use in this course. So how do we write down a scalar how do we write down a vector, what does a matrix look like in the notation and so on. And uh, if you have difficulties understanding one of the formula, you can go back to this slide and see if um, the notation is helping you. Um, but uh, you can also approach us in the uh, example, in the exercise sessions uh, or try it on Elias in, in the forum. Now going forward here, uh, we have also notation for uh, sets. For example, this big A is a set and small a is an element of that. Uh, and we can have then a containment or um, subsets of, of these sets. We can have unions, intersections, we have the empty set. And uh, something that uh, will be quite important later on is um, a set with a certain constraint over the condition. So here we have the set of all x squared of all x where x squared equals to 1 so this set will contain uh, exactly 1 and minus 1 and um, well this is just a notation that you might not be familiar with that uh, occurs later on. There are some abbreviations that happen on the slides to shorten the text a little bit for example if and only if is abbreviated as IFF and uh, right hand side left hand side is abbreviated but usually in the, in, the, in the presentation of the slides I will um, indicate everything once more and uh, um, if you follow the videos everything should be uh, well, out in the open. Now to the first concept uh, from mathematics uh, to recover some of the, some of the notation. Um, what you see here is the definition of a derivative. So most of you have learned that already uh, during the, the A-levels before the Abitur in Germany. Um, and uh, the basic definition is that when we have x an open subset of R and uh, f goes from x to R, then uh, f is differentiable at every point and uh, we have a deriv derivative if the limit that is indicated here exists. So um, uh, you can think about this as uh, having selected a certain point and uh, then taking forward a small step h and then the question is how much does the response of the function change when you are adding a little step h in front of that. And what we then do is we um, make the h smaller and smaller and smaller and um, if this converges to, or if the limit then exists, if uh, this results in a number, then uh, this is the derivative. And uh, we can show this for a small example. So f of x equals 2x plus 3x squared. I will not go over this in the same detail now, but uh, you can try to, to follow along um, and, uh, and do this uh, on your own on, on the slide. So besides the the derivative that we've just seen, the gradient is an important topic and the gradient is an optimization in several dimensions. So if you don't have an f from some uh, x to uh, that is a subset of, of uh, the real numbers to r, um, but when we have r to the power of n to r, so an input in several dimensions, then we can also take the derivative in each of the input dimensions. So uh, oftentimes we are abbreviating the notation here. So when we have f of x comma y, then this can be abbreviated by having a single vector as input. In, in that case here you see the x is written with a bold notation. So, so this is a column vector. And we can uh, take the derivative to every element of this column vector. And this is exp expressed here. So we have the gradient and uh, the gradient then is the derivative first to x1, the first element of the vector, then to x2, the second element of the vector and so on. And uh, we can look at this 
um, from, from, from a visual perspective how this looks like. So if this red dot here in the example on the right side is the, the point X, then we have a gradient going out from, from that point and um, we have the derivatives in the different directions. So first in the X direction and then in the Y direction and um, they are defining like um, a plane, like a plane that is touching the function at that point and that is tangent in the direction uh, of, the, of the derivative. And um, the, we have also the notation to take the, the gradient to just a subset of the input. So if you have a function f that um, takes two vectors as input, for example, we can uh, take the derivative to just the first input vector and here this is then expressed as grad f uh, uh, to x, grad x of f. Okay. Now besides the first derivative there is also the second derivative and uh, the first derivative uh, it gives us the gradient and the second derivative it gives us the Hessian matrix. And in the Hessian matrix, uh, the first entry uh, here is uh, derived twice uh, for x1. And then here, the second entry, it would be derived once for x1 and then for x2. So the second element of the input vector and so on. And this then continues. And um, the Hessian matrix, it is actually um, symmetric, so we can uh, take the transpose of it and it will stay identical uh, because the order of the differentiation does not matter. So if we first derive by x1 and then by x2 or first by x2 and then by x1 the end result uh, will be identical. And again let's imagine uh, uh, or let's take a, a visual perspective on how this looks like. Here we have the uh, point x somewhere on the, the yellow plane, so the yellow plane is the original function. And then we uh, do a so-called Taylor expansion at this point. So we have first of all f of x, so um, the, the result of the function at that point. Then we have the gradient, so and um, here this would give us a plane that goes through um, f of x. And, um, and then with the second degree Taylor expansion, we are adding how how to say how to, uh, like a like a like a bowl that um, is uh, exactly the second degree uh, derivative at the point uh, f of x. And uh, the second degree Taylor series, or by going then into third, fourth, and so on degree, we more and more closely approximate this function given, of course, that, is, that the function is that many times uh, differentiable. And um, uh, what is important here that uh, the, the, the Hessian that you see here, the, the Hesse matrix, uh, for this example, uh, it results in an upward curved uh, bowl, and um, uh, this can be characterized, uh, and we will see that later on, uh, as a so-called um, positive definite uh, Hessian matrix and um, this is important to see uh, if we are minimizing uh, if uh, for example um, we will reach the bottom of uh, the, the Taylor series or if maybe it doesn't have uh, actually a minimum because uh, it is bent downwards and um, this then this situation then is not uh, possible if we if we if we are trying to find the, the minimum. So there are further good references, so if you want to refresh even more, uh, there's a really good course on the essence of calculus on YouTube by 3Blue1Brown. So if the previous slides were maybe a little bit confusing for you, or uh, maybe if your analysis course is already a few years back, and if you want to refresh with the YouTube video, I can recommend 3Blue1Brown. Uh, and um, there's also a book by Hubbard and Hubbard it goes a lot deeper than this, but uh, the first chapters, chapters are a good uh, recapitulation of um, the, well, the basics of, of analysis.